Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie Colours. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am doing a fun video today. It's all about Halloween pages. So how this came about was I was kind of getting in the mood for Halloween last night. I um, bought some Halloween decorations for my daughter. We decorated our door. We um, watched a scary movie and I was kind of just really thinking about Halloween. And I was like, oh, I don't have any Halloween books. Maybe I should buy a Halloween book. And then I was like, no, don't be silly. I have tons of books. I don't need to buy any more. I'm sure I've got lots of Halloween pages. So I started going through all my books and I do. I have tons of Halloween pages. I don't have any Halloween specific books, but tons of pages that work for Halloween. So I kind of thought, well, I'll share them with you guys. I'm sure you've probably seen loads floating around at the moment, but I just thought it was kind of fun. We've got just under two weeks until Halloween, so um, it's probably a good time to be doing this video. And um, yeah, I just thought I would I would share the pages that I found that I thought worked really well for Halloween. So for me, Halloween, um, I am not the kind of gore horror type girl. I'm more kind of like mystical cutesy, I suppose. Um, so I don't have any of the like Mythagoria books or anything like that. Um, so the, the pages I picked, I, I, like certain things scream Halloween to me. So things like jack-o'-lanterns, things like um, pump, like pumpkins, but obviously like in a scary setting. Um, so witches, um, ghosts, um, bats, spiders, that sort of stuff. Um, so when I was looking through my pages, there were certain things I was kind of looking for for Halloween, and I think I found them in these pages. So I'm going to start talking and just start showing you what I found. So this first book is a Victorian fantasy picture book by Kuroi Mori. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and I'm, so I'm going to start with my kind of Japanese books, and I found quite a few in these. So there is this one, which is a little bit of a different take on a, um, on a, on a witch for Halloween. She's obviously very steampunk looking um, on her kind of motorcycle there. But I just thought that that was kind of a good, um, a good fun one for something different. So that was the first page I found. That was from Victorian Fantasy Picture Book by Kuroi Mori. Then I have A Seasonal Wreaths of Plants and Friends. This one is by, um, oh, I can't remember the name. Makiko and Atomi, the same lady that does the um, Yururi Mouse sketchbook, and I'll be bringing that one out in a second. So in this one, there's a whole section dedicated to autumn, obviously, um, but I found this wreath in particular. I'm just going to move this over a little bit so I can squeeze it in. Uh, so this wreath, it's got, um, I don't, I, I'm presuming this is a pumpkin, but it looks like it's like, almost looks like a candy apple as well. <laughs> I don't know, but we've got little witches and there's a witch riding her broomstick. So this definitely is towards the cutesy kind of side of Halloween. And then, sorry, I'm going to peel off the markers as we go. And then there was also these two pages. Um, so we've got this one with the... Um, Kind of witch casting her spell. I think she's trying to make her plants grow a little bit faster. I don't know. <laughs> but there was that one, which again is very cutesy. And then this one, which I thought was really, really sweet with the little witch inside the wreath. And you've got a broomstick here and some crystals and mushrooms and a little kind of bubbling cauldron. So those were two that I found in there as well. So that's Seasonal Wreaths of Plants and Friends by Makiko Inatomi. Next up, I have The Journey Through Fairy Tales by Sayuro, Sayuro, sorry, Sayuriko Bay, Bayashi. I'm so sorry. I'm sure that I'm butchering that. That's as good as it's going to get from me. Um, but this one had this cute, well, two cute pages here. We've got the, um, let me move over this side first. I absolutely love this one with the huge big full moon and all the jack-o'-lanterns this kind of spooky cemetery and some little ghosties and a little mummy here and this little guy dressed up as a ghost 
I just thought that one was absolutely adorable. Um, and then on the next page, you've got this cute one with the Happy Halloween banner. And you've got all the little critters dressed up in their Halloween finery and some bats and things flying around in the background. So that one is super cute. So that is from A Journey Through Fairy Tales by Sayuriko Bayashi. And I apologize if I'm getting that completely wrong. Okay. Then I have Wild Mouse Yuri's sketchbook by Makiko Inatomi. And there is this cute, well, there's two cute pages here. We've got this one with the big happy Halloween, um, again, critters in their costumes um, and full moon in the background. And then you've got this one where they're kind of baking cookies and treats for Halloween. So we've got Halloween trick or treat, um, some pumpkins and bat kind of cookies. This is less, I mean, I know it's Halloween because of the cookies and the shapes of them, but it's not screaming Halloween to me, but this one definitely, I love this one. So cute. So that is from Wild Mouse Yuri's sketchbook by Makiko Inatomi. Then we have, oh, not that one. This one, which is Rabbit's Fairy Tale Fantasy Picture Book. This one is by Cotely, and I found a couple in here. So we have this page with the um, cute kind of tree house with all the little witches around, um, flying around on their broomsticks and things. Super cute. Like this page. Very, very cutesy. Cutesy Halloween. <laughs> and then we have this one here over on this side which is magic cooking and uh, you've got your little witch character creating some sort of potion in his his or her cauldron um but again i thought it's very very cute so very very much like not scary at all <laughs> which is kind of how i like my halloween so that one it came from rabbit's fairy tale fantasy picture book by Cotely. And then in this book, that's so cool. This is Polar Bear's Adventure Cruise by Yuki Shiratori. There are, there's like a whole Halloween section and I just love it. It is so cute. How gorgeous is this first page here? Just stunning. I love it. I love the little ghosts. Um, just ultra cute. You've got your kind of spooky haunted house thing in the background, the big full moon, lots of pumpkins and your little character dressed up. Um, absolutely love it but as I say there's a whole section in this book so we've kind of got um, this is less Halloween to me you kind of got a little ghost coming up the chimney and you've got uh, your fox here dressed up as a rabbit handing out treats and it kind of reminds me of Hansel and Gretel's house because it looks like it's made out of sweets in the garden looks like it's all kind of planted with sweets um, and then you've got this one where they're looking like they're going trick-or-treating with their little pumpkin baskets. You've got a little ghost, a couple of little ghosts floating around. Here's that kind of haunted house and the full moon in the background. You've got a pumpkin house here. So, so cute. Then we've got this page where they're all kind of dressed up. Um, they've got some little potions and things around. So, so cute. And here, Polar Bear is dressed up as a ghost, and the bear is dressed up as a mummy, and yet you've just got lots of little bits and pieces around. Then you've got this kind of like spooky cute tree with the pumpkin patch in the front, and the ghosts around again. It's super cute. Some cauldrons bubbling, and treats being eaten on this page. And yeah, I think that's it. Oh, well, I, I guess you could. You could say this double page, and if I can fit all that in, you got a witch there. But I, yeah, that's kind of less Halloween to me than these other ones, but they're so cute. <laughs> so that is Polar Bear's Adventure Cruise by Yuki Shiratori. Okay, on to kind of probably more classic Halloween spooky stuff. This is Wonder Morphia by Kirby Roseanne. So I'm going to go through my Kirby Roseanne's book here. And I, I found quite a few in Kirby Roseanne's books. So in Wonder Morphia, I found this hanging bat. Um, just think that would be a good one. I mean, you could, oh, I can't get these tags off. It would be good. Um, it's also kind of a good 
November-ish page as well, but I just think it's kind of spooky and creepy. Bats, I don't know if they are, aren't they? <laughs> they are to me anyway. Uh, I'm sure some people find them adorable, but yeah, that that that's a uh, one page I found. Then I found um, the spider again. Another thing that's kind of you know not particularly present. I'm not completely like terrified of them. I can deal with them if I find them in the house and that sort of thing. I generally try and get them outside somehow. Um, but, I, you know, they're still creepy crawly. <laughs> so, yeah, that one. And then the other one that I found was this one, which, um, oh, there's two more in here, actually, which is the Hourglass. And the reason I added this one in, um, again, it's not, maybe not classically Halloween, but you've got the crows, you've got the skulls. Um, yeah, it's kind of giving creepy vibes. I mean, you've got the dragons kind of standing on human, or well, are they human? Some, some sort of skulls there. Um, so it's it's a bit creepy. And then the jack-o'-lantern, um, which is this one, which is obviously very clearly Halloween <laughs> uh, with the big jack-o'-lantern. I think that's kind of cool. Um, I would really like to get this one done. I have no idea if I'm going to get any of these pages done. Um, because I still have a few buddy colours that I really need to finish, but like I said, I was kind of in the mood for looking at Halloween pages, and I just thought I'd share what I found. So that's Wonder Morphia by Kirby Rosans. And then I have Mythomorphia. So Mythomorphia, there are tons of pages that you could say Halloween. There's lots of like creepy creatures and gnomes and goblins and all that sort of stuff, but I decided just to kind of stick with... Um, what I would consider real sort of Halloween like um yeah like really easily identifiable Halloween kind of things <laughs> if you like so a werewolf for example is uh, a good one for that one so you've got the werewolf you've got lots of bats in the back here as well so I think that's a really good Halloween page I then found um, these two, which again, they're not necessarily Halloween, like you wouldn't necessarily look at them and go, oh, they're definitely Halloween, but they're kind of creepy enough looking to be Halloween. Um, this one in particular, the spider, really, the yuck. <laughs> um, so I kind of threw them in there as well. And then I've got, not the unicorn, um, these two pages, which again, kind of scream Halloween. You've got the Cyclops here, and it's kind of scary looking. And then you've got the kind of, uh, I can't remember what these are called, I need to look at the back, but they're kind of like ghouls, like spectres of some sort, definitely very scary, creepy looking. And the final one that I found in here was the Cer Cerebus. I think that's what he's called the three-headed dog um again not necessarily you know you wouldn't kind of necessarily look at it and go oh definitely halloween but it's kind of scary enough that it gives that halloween vibe so yeah so quite a few in that one that was a mythomorphia by kirby rosans then of course alien worlds um again this is a book that you could probably say pretty much every page is um Halloween. I'm not really, um, I don't know, aliens, for me, aliens don't necessarily scream Halloween, but there are a few kind of scarier looking aliens in here, which I thought worked quite well. So you've got this kind of, it's not a double page, but I think they're the same sort of creatures on both pages. So kind of, yeah, really freaky looking things. <laughs> um, yeah, they kind of, ugh, not, not my favourite kind of things. Um, you've got this guy with his kind of big, big eyeball. Um, he's kind of just really, I don't know, odd looking. Um, <laughs> thought would be a good one for Halloween. Then I've got, um, oh, this guy, kind of like a robotic dog type creature thing um which is quite scary and then the final one that i thought was really quite horrible 
There's this guy, well actually both of these pages, this guy with his big mouth and big teeth giving chase to the astronaut and then this thing, um, some sort of lava monster I think, but yeah both of those are kind of terrifying enough for me for, to include them in my Halloween, possible Halloween pages. To be honest I probably wouldn't veer towards this book if I was looking for Halloween, but um, I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. So that's Alien Worlds by Kirby Rosanz. Then I have Mythic World, again by Kirby Rosanz, and I found tons in here. Again, there's probably plenty more that you could um, choose. I'm not going to go through the names of all of these because I cannot remember them all and I'd need to look in the back and this video is going to be long enough as it is, but you've got this sky, <laughs> very scary looking, kind of looks, um, I don't know, just very fiendish looking, isn't he? Um, then I've got this one again, just kind of has that kind of almost evil look about him. <laughs> Might be quite a pleasant creature, you never know, but he's got that look. Um, so there is that one, there is the Baba Yaga, of course. This one is, for me, this is really like proper Halloween. Um, she's a witch, isn't she? She's got a skull, she's got a broomstick. And she's absolutely terrifying looking. <laughs> so I think that would be out of out of this book, this would probably be my my top Halloween page choice. You've got this um kind of again, he's a little bit of a lava, lava monster type creature. Um another one that I think is is pretty terrifying. And there's lots of skulls and things around. Um we have got the werewolf and the vampire, clearly, definitely Halloween vibes from these two, much like Baba Yaga, this, these two guys are definitely Halloween for me, for sure. Um, look how, oh my god, <laughs> it's kind of really scary looking, um, so perfect Halloween pages. Then we've got these two lovely looking creatures here. Um, yeah, both of which are very scary looking to me. Um, I don't know what either of these are called without looking in the back, but yep, horrible. <laughs> and then you've got the gargoyles here. Um, again, they just have that kind of scary, horrifying look um, about them. I always found gargoyles like strange things to put, put on churches. Um, but yeah, I think they're there, to, they're there to ward off actual like evil, aren't they? And then the final one is this one whose name, again, I cannot remember, but she's like the spider type character from Japanese mythology. Um, and that one is really terrifying. <laughs> I really don't like that one. So some really good options in this book. This is Mythic World by Kirby Rosanz. Okay, let's go back to something a bit cuter again. <laughs> I like the scary ones. Uh, a Million Magical Creatures by Lulu Mayo. Let me zoom you in slightly. Uh, this one, there are tons and tons and tons of pages that you could do for Halloween in these books. Um, I've done a couple of them, but I kind of picked out some of the like more obvious Halloween pages, if you like. So this one I did, I think I did this one last year. Yeah, last year, last October. Um, a very, very cute one. I love that one. Little wreath with the witch in the middle. You've got this one as well, where she's flying over the city. There's lots of little characters in here. This would be a fun one to do. And then another one that I have already completed, um, but I did a while ago, which is this one with the witch and the kind of castle in the background but then you've also got this jack-o-lantern as well which is ultra cute i love this one so quite a few different options from this book that's lulu mayo's a million magical creatures then i have lulu mayo's little monsters and this really is like i said i don't have any halloween specific books you could kind of consider this one a halloween specific book because there are monsters and bats and like little creatures on every page. Some of them I think are far more Halloween-y than others, like this one I did actually in February of this year. It wasn't even Halloween, it just felt like doing it. I think it's when I got the book. You've got the bat here on stage. Um, so yeah, but 
pretty much every page in here could be considered Halloween. Again, there's you know a few others like this one where they look like they're dressed up for Halloween. This one with the jack-o'-lantern and them dressed up for Halloween. So there are definitely some that I consider more Halloween than others. I don't know if that makes sense. But hopefully you know what I mean when I say that. Um, but yeah, pretty much every page in here, like look at this one. This would be a great one for Halloween. Um, but every page in here is super cute. And these ones, I just, I've seen a lot of people do the, both of these pages actually this year for Halloween and they're so cute. So I love that book. So that's A Million Little Monsters by Lulu Mayo. I only found one um, that I thought worked for um, Halloween in my Malcolm and Chats Panic two books. And this one comes from Circle of Life. And it is this one with the spiders again. Um, obviously, Malcolm and Eve's books tend to be more kind of um, nature and animals. So they're not really, you know, scary things. But this one I thought would be quite a cool one to do for Halloween with the spiders and the spider web. So that is the only one I found from Malcolm and Eve Chats Penigitu, though. And that is from A Circle of Life. Next up, I have some Kanoko Igusa books. Um, this is the Waltzes for the Seasons, which is the postcard book. And I did a page in here. Um, again, there's kind of a little section. So this is a bit of a sneak peek of one that I've done for this year. There's also this cute little one down here with them dressed up in their Halloween costumes. The ghost is chasing the other critters. You've got those ones this one as well which I absolutely adore I think it's gorgeous you've got a Halloween sign here you've got the little characters dressed up he's got his little trick-or-treat bucket you've got some um, bats flying around and some pumpkins I just love this one so that is a from a post um waltzes for the seasons a postcard book by Kanoko Agusa I then have Symphony of Cute Animals by Kanoko Agusa and I found that in all of Kanoko Agusa's books um she has some Halloween type pages. So in this one, we have this cute, cute page with the little, uh, is that, I think he's a fox and then the little mice, or is that a rabbit and a mouse? I don't know. Um, but obviously flying on their broomstick through the air, which I think is really cool. You've got the big full moon in the background again. This would be a fun one to do. And then one that I did last year, which is this one, not last year, yeah, it was last year, um, which is this one with the little mice kind of brewing their potion. You've got a jack-o'-lantern and some pumpkins and things down here. So this is a really fun one to do. There are some other like, you know, like this one with pumpkins and things, but they don't screen Halloween. They're more like autumn, fall, but those were two Halloween type pages I found. That's Symphony of Cute Animals. Then I have Kingdom of Curious Creatures by Kanoko Agusa. And again, I found this page in here. It's another kind of witches on their broomsticks flying through the night. Um, I think it's just really, really cute. This would be a fun one to do. Um, kind of like, yeah, you kind of got like a haunted, oh, it's actually a church. It's got a cross on it, but lots of bats and it's kind of, yeah. It's it's a it's a bit of a different one this one, but I quite like it. I'm not sure it, like this kind of confuses me though because you've got this. It, it's like a bit of land, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere. Like, is this meant to be all land? I don't know. It it kind of confuses me a bit this page, and then you've kind of got these two lamps here, which are part of the border. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's a cute page. I think I'd have to really think about how I'd tackle that one though. But that's a cute one from Kanoko Igusa's Kingdom of Curious Creatures. And then in a Garden of Fairy Tale Animals, I actually did a page in here this year, so you're getting another sneak peek. You've got this one with the cat in the costume. And then you've also got this mandala type one with the jack-o'-lanterns and the kind of spooky haunted house in the middle and then like witch's hats and things, which I think is really, really cute. And then on the opposite page, oh, it's not in this one. Let me bring it back out, because I've missed it. It's, I think it's in Symphony of Cute Animals. 
I meant to show it and I forgot. Yeah, this one, which is a big double page spread. So let me try and zoom you out slightly so I can get it all in. Um, of like a Halloween party with all the critters dressed up in their Halloween costumes, having some lovely treats. Now, I, my page bled through from the opposite side from that one I did last year. Um, paper in this book is, is it's really it's not great, but um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to cover that up with my pencils when I went over the top of it. But yeah, I'm not ready to tackle this one just yet. But this cat reminds me of the cat that I coloured this year with the kind of costume on. Um, but that is from Symphony of Cute Animals by Kaneko Gusa. Okay, Eerie Books. Eerie has quite a few pages of Halloween stuff. So, sorry, this one is from um, Legends of the World by Eerie. And there are two here, which I thought worked quite nicely. You've got this page. I'm not sure I have to look at what these ones are from. Um, sorry, bear with me. I'm just trying to figure out which legends they are. Um, so this one is, this one is called, oh, it's just the pages from what I translated that is just cute ghosts on Halloween. So there we go. Perfect Halloween page. You've got ghosts. You've got the big jack-o'-lantern, you've got this kind of, it almost looks a bit like, could be York Castle, I'm not sure, because the page on this side is um, York Ghost Tour, which I have actually done this ghost tour, and it's really, really good, many, many years ago. So there's a place in York called The Shambles, which is very old, and it's got these really old kind of buildings, dates from like the 1600s it's ancient honestly it's crazy and they do this ghost tour through there it's a lot of fun if you ever go to york northern england you can do that it's so much fun so there's those two pages and then on the other side you've got this kind of like little um small victories type page of halloween type images and then you've got the witch flying through the town on her broomstick so there's quite a few in that one, Legends of the World by Eerie. Then in Romantic Country, oh, let's start with the first tale and do them in order. So Romantic Country, the first tale by Eerie, we have this one, which is a perfect Halloween page with the kind of scarecrow jack-o'-lantern and some other little jack-o'-lanterns sitting on the floor there. Um, and trick or treat sign so yeah really cute one for Halloween I really like this one and I've seen this one done a lot of times and it always looks really lovely so that is Romantic Country the first tale from the second tale is actually again it's another page that I've just completed so I don't want to show too much of it but there's that one and then I think was there more in here it was I've marked them so we've got this double page spread which is kind of like, it reminds me of Diagon Alley <laughs> in um, Harry Potter, because it's kind of like a magical village. You've got an owl shop, a magic potions shop, a cauldron shop, uh, you've got a broomstick shop and a wizard wear shop, and then this place selling big pumpkins and things. Um, so this is a really cool one for Halloween. Um, yeah, I'd really have to take my time with this because look at all that detail on there. But isn't that cool? I love that one. And then there's also, there's kind of almost like a whole section in this book. So you've got the um, kind of witch's house, tree house with her magic potion sign. Um, and I mean, you could argue that any of these would be good for Halloween. You've got, I guess this is inside the witch's house. This must be the witch, I'm presuming. Um, you kind of got this one with the scales and the witch's hat and that sort of thing. So there's a whole little kind of section in here of witchy, witchy type stuff. And you've got this kind of like haunted house. So this one has quite a lot in it. So that's Romantic Country, The Second Tale by Eerie. And then we have Romantic Country, The Third Tale, also by Eerie, obviously. And in this one, again, so yeah, we've got a kind of whole section here. So we've got this kind of, to me it looks like a witch's house, but 
you wouldn't necessarily have to call it a witch's house but it could be a good one for halloween you've got this one which is kind of like this cauldron and it's bubbling up some sort of potion which i think is hatching out a dragon um you've got the witch flying past the big full moon on her broomstick you've got the kind of two jack-o'-lantern creatures in the spooky forest and i think yeah and then you've got the um madame liliana's witch's hat shop which i think is a really cool one you've got magic potions is that it yeah i think that's pretty much it for this but there's quite a few options in this book so that's romantic country the third tale by eerie Okay, in my Maria Trolley books, I struggled to find much in the way of Halloween. The only thing I found was in Botanicum, which is this one. So you've got the jack-o'-lantern and well, a couple of jack-o'-lanterns and the bat and then some little kind of ghouls or ghosties um, in there. But yeah, that was the only one I could find that I would really class as you know, Halloween um, for Maria Trolley. So that was from Botanicum. I then have loads of Hannah Carlson. Hannah Carlson has tons and tons and tons of <laughs> Halloween pages. So this is Soulmates, first of all, um, and I found a few in here. So obviously this page is an obvious choice. You've got the witch um, with her broomstick and then the kind of potions and things on this side with the frogs. Um, so I thought that was a really good option for Halloween pages. I think this one would be really fun to do. You've then also got a couple of maybe not obvious choices, but I thought for me they looked quite um, spooky looking. Um, so you've got this kind of like robot and the kind of animatronic spider. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but that one, which I thought could work. This one again, this one I think is really good Halloween page. This is kind of like the bat and the, she looks like a vampire. She's got the pointy teeth. So I thought that one would work well. <coughs> Excuse me. You then got this one again, not necessarily an obvious choice, but um, she's kind of scary looking with her forked tongue um so uh, get the snake girl and you could do the snakes as well and then the final one in this book again not necessarily an obvious choice but i thought i'd throw it in there this kind of like steam very steampunk looking um girl with this kind of like steampunk fly i think it's a fly anyway that's what i'm going with i don't know maybe it's something else but I thought that could work at a at a push, but I think the other two, the the bat and the um, the witch with the frog at the start would be the two obvious choices in Soulmates. Then in Seasons by Hannah Carlson, I have this one. So again, I've seen this one done so many times this year. It just looks so good done. I'd really like to do it. I'm not sure I'm going to get it done this year, but it's lovely. Um, so you've got the witch with the jack-o'-lanterns and the kind of broomstick forming the border, which I think is lovely. And then the little kitty sitting on the spell books. Um, so these are cute pages for Halloween. So that is from Seasons by Hannah Carlson. Of course, Tales from the Witch's Cottage. There are literally just about every page in here. You could argue is Halloween of some description because they mostly have witches and things on them. So I guess I do have another book that is Halloween. <laughs> this is lovely. I really like this one. Um, so yeah, it, just about anything in here is a good Halloween choice. Um, but I do, I do feel like a lot of the pages in here you could do any time of the year. But yeah, definitely a lot of good choices for Halloween in here. So that is Tales from the Witch's Cottage by Hannah Carlson. In Tales from the Forest Kingdom by Hannah Carlson, I found a couple of the, oh, not that one. That one's, did I find any in here? Or is it, I just, these are just ones that I've marked to do. Yeah, ignore that. I didn't. I don't think I even looked in this one. 
because I was kind of like, oh no, I just want to keep that for other things. Oh, so that, where did that go? That one could be quite a good one with the troll. That could be quite a good one for Halloween. And then there's a wizard in here as well, which would be quite a good one for Halloween as well, I think. Like I say, Halloween for me, I'm, I'm more, you know, kind of veering towards the mystic um, and cutesy kind of stuff rather than the scary stuff. Yeah, so I think those two, I pulled that book out by mistake, but there you go, I found two in there. Uh, then in Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson, there are a couple of options. So we have, again, spiders. Um, so you've got, this one doesn't really like scream Halloween to me because you've got this kind of clover here, um, which kind of just makes it look quite pretty, really. <laughs> um, but this one, I think you could definitely make it quite dark and spooky looking. And then the other one is one that I've actually got earmarked to do as a buddy colour in um, November. And it's this bat, this hanging bat. Again, you've got some florals and things around it, but I, I, it does kind of speak to me about Halloween. So I do like that one. So those ones are from Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. I then have a jewellery box by Hannah Carlson. And I found this one in here which i thought um not so much this page but for definite this page kind of is giving me spooky vibes you've got the bird skull and then these kind of like strange kind of potion type things um and these they look like coral but yeah it kind of it gave me kind of halloween vibes so there is that, that one, I should say. You could include this if you want, because it kind of looks like you could make this into a crow, but definitely less so this page, more this one. So that is from a jewellery box by Hannah Carlson. Okay, excuse me, I had to have a drink. My throat was getting a bit dry. Okay, so a few more books. Um, I've got Fairy Tales and Folklore by Emily Lederhall Oberg. And there are kind of lots of, um, obviously, fantasy type ones in there. But specifically for Halloween, I thought that this one worked quite nicely with the, um, it's kind of a, is it a, a terrarium, a, a cloche with the frog and the kind of, pumpkin gourd type thing here um it kind of gave me halloween vibes but that was really the only one that i could say definitely gave me halloween vibes in this book but there's so many cool, cool ones and i really want to do something in this book that's fairy tales and folklore by emily leader hall oberg then in my clara markova books um i didn't find i mean i pulled these out there are like this is little secrets from my fairy house, sorry. There are pages in here that you could argue are Halloween type pages, but they don't scream Halloween to me. Does that make sense? I don't know if that's making sense at all. Like there are pages in here that I think it's um, in here, they have some little like witch type characters and things, but they just, it doesn't like this one. You could kind of argue could be Halloween-y. Um, you've got like a, a witch hat and you've got the hanging bats um and you've got kind of a cauldron i suppose yeah but it just doesn't scream halloween to me so i didn't really include it i just kind of pulled it out to show you what i was talking about that's little secrets from my fairy house by clara Markova. then i have fairy touch of magic which does have some proper what i would consider proper halloween pages so this one is the perfect example look at this double page spread my lovely friend Katia from Bubble of Colouring has just recently done this page and oh my goodness, it is amazing. And there's so much detail in this page. It is unreal, but perfect for Halloween. You've got the kind of pumpkin gourd things. You've got the kind of skeleton bride here. You've got a bat, you've got a full moon, you've got some little ghosties, you've got the witch, you've got the gravestones, you've got a big crow. Um, so it ticks all the elements. And it's kind of cute, so it, it's a fun one. And then you've got this one, which kind of is like, um, is it the same as Papa Yaga? I can't remember, there's, there's like a, a legend of a house on, on legs that kind of runs. I can't remember if it comes from Baba Yaga or from somewhere else, but this one would work quite nicely. You've obviously got the jack-o'-lantern, you've got this kind of 
witch cat up here, a few bats flying around. So this one would work well. You then also have this one, which is less so, but I included it because this guy looks like he's kind of dressed up like a bat. I think he's a mouse dressed up as a bat. You've got this kind of witchy cat here and then this kind of gourd house. Um, so and yeah, it's stretching it a bit to be Halloween, but I thought it ticked some of the boxes. So that one is from A Fairy Touch of Magic by Clara Makova. Then I have a few Teresa Goodrich books. So Gnome Sweet Gnome by Teresa Goodridge. And, oh, don't mark it. Oh, maybe it wasn't this one. I pulled this book out thinking it had, but it doesn't. Ignore that. I think at the page I was thinking of is in here, which is Autumn Harvest by Teresa Goodridge. And she's got a couple of gnome pages in here. And I know, yeah, not this one, but there is a gnome page where they're like saying happy Halloween or trick or treat. But this is one from this book anyway, um, trick or treat with the big jack-o'-lantern and the candy bucket. A really cutesy one like that one. Then you've got this one. Again, it's not screaming Halloween as such, but you've got the jack-o'-lantern here. You could turn this into a black cat, couldn't you? Um, and you could maybe try and turn this into a bit of a haunted type house, but it's, yeah, it's bearing on not being. This is the page I was thinking of when I was thinking of that gnome sweet gnome book. It's this one with the little, um, gnomes dressed up for Halloween like little witches and they got the kind of spooky tree and the cauldron and the pumpkins. Um, this one is a super cute to which way to the candy. And you've got another gnome one here with the jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, I think that one's a really cute one. That would be fun to do. And the final one I found in this book was this one. Again, Happy Halloween. It's quite similar to that first one, really, with the big kind of tower of pumpkins. Where did that one go? That one. They're kind of similar concepts with the tower of pumpkins and the jack-o'-lantern face on the top. Um, candy treat basket. And you've got your kind of witch's broom, which also hooks a little lantern there, but that's kind of fun. So that's what I found in Autumn Harvest by Teresa Goodrich. Then in Autumn Charm, I found a couple as well. You've got this one, which is like a window scene looking, I guess it's from the inside looking out, I presume, because you wouldn't be having all those pumpkins unless it's a display inside the window, which is possible as well. I don't know, but <laughs> either way, it's kind of a fun one. Happy Halloween. You've got this one, trick or treat with the big kind of pumpkin candy basket. Uh, it looks really, really cool. And then finally, this one, which I've seen done a couple of times and it's so cool. It's like a haunted house. Um, you've got the jack-o'-lanterns, you've got the scarecrow there, and you've got kind of like bats and things. Um, yeah, this one would be a fun one to do. So that's from Autumn Charm by Teresa Goodridge. Then I have Magical Woodland by Kate Palloran. And again, this is one of these books that you could maybe argue that just about every page is um, veering towards Halloween, but there were a couple that really stood out. So first one being this one with the witch mixing up her magic potion here. Um, I think this one is so fun. I think this would be a really fun one to do. And then the other one is this one. It's the same character. <laughs> She's fast asleep this time though. And she is busy selling those magic potions that she was mixing up in the first page. So I think those ones are both super cute. Love this book. I've only done one page in this book. I really need to do some more in here. But that is Magical Woodland by Kate Pellerin. Next up, I have Petty Poupe, which is an art therapy Hatchet Heroes um, Disney book. I, again, it's not strictly Halloween, but I thought I'd throw a couple of Disney villains in here as well, because, you know, 
you can't have Halloween without a Disney villain or two. <laughs> so I have Ursula here. Uh, super cute. I have Maleficent. Uh, again, I love this one. It's super cute. And then there's another Ursula page, uh, which is this one. So I thought I'd just kind of throw those in there as cutesy options for Halloween. So Disney villains. I love this book. Petty Poupee by Art Therapy Hatchet. Here is it's illustrated by Capuchin Sauvignon. Okay, a couple of Hannah Lynn books. I have the Pocket Sized Fierce and Fancy Fantasy Faces Line Art and Grayscale Coloring Book. Goodness, that's a mouthful. Um, I've only done one page in this book, but I found a couple that would work. So this one with the kind of vampire girl. She's got her Transylvanian castle in the background and a big full moon. This book is kind of fun because you get two, two pages. Um, one is grayscale and one is just line art. And then the other one I found was Medusa. Again, it's not strictly speaking um, Halloween, but it was kind of, you know, it's kind of freaky enough, I think, to warrant a mention. <laughs> so that is Fierce and Fancy Fantasy Faces, Line Art and Grayscale Pocket Size Coloring Book by Hannah Lynn. These tiny books have such a mouthful. And another one by Hannah Lynn, Enchanted Faces, Mermaids, Fairies and Fantasy Pocket Size Coloring Book. I have not touched this one for so long. I did, was doing so well in this book. I had so many pages done. I haven't touched it for ages. But I just found the one in here which I thought would work. Um, again, you wouldn't say it's strictly Halloween, but she's got um, some bats in the background and this looks like a bit of a crow, so I thought you could make it work for Halloween. So that one is from Enchanted Faces, Mermaids, Fairies and Fantasy, a pocket-sized colouring book by Hannah Lynn. Not many more guys, <laughs> we're getting there. Next up, I have this Diane Dufour art therapy book. It's called Bull de Poix, which we've all seen and heard of this one. And you've got a couple of pages here, which I thought would work. And actually, this one is for the um, hashtag that is being hosted by Colourful Diary and Amanda Colours, I think it is. They do a page every month from in this book. And this is the page for October, and it's perfect for Halloween. Uh, you've got the kind of cute kitty with the skulls and the magic spell books and some bats and things. So I thought that one worked quite well. This one as well, you've kind of got like a little jack-o'-lantern type thing going on here with the bunnies. Um, but particularly this one. So that is from a Bull de Poix. Then in Nuno Therapy, which is her other kind of cute little book, also by Dan Dufour, I just found this one, which is this kind of Halloween party scene where they're dressed up and a dancing the night away looks like a lot of fun super cute um love these books so so cute but i thought that was a lot of fun too so new nor therapy by diane dufour and my matchstick mouse autumn coloring book now again you could kind of argue that matchstick mouse is halloween all year round because matchstick mouse is of course a witch <laughs> but i just found a couple that i thought were really Halloween like so I've got this one with the spooky spiders um, which I think is kind of cool I got this one with the bat hanging upside down in his cave or her cave as the case may be and the final one that I thought worked quite well is this one with the spooky cave and the spider and yeah just kind of Looked a bit more spooky, I suppose. <laughs> so yeah, that is from a Matchstick Mouse and Autumn Colouring Book by Morgan O'Brien. Okay, next up I have a couple of books by Christine Karen. So I'll start with Fairy and Fantasy Grayscale Colouring Book. And I found just this one in here. This is um, Mr. Vampire, it's called. So again, perfect for Halloween, spooky vampire. Um, but again, you could kind of argue just about anything in here. Um, there's lots of fae, fairy type images, but for me, it's kind of going to be a little bit spooky. So that was the one I found in Fairy and Fantasy by Christine Karen. And then in Fairy and Fantasy 2, I found a couple. 
you've got this gorgeous one which is called Lady Witch. I think that is just stunning. Really love that page. And then the other one I found was this one again. It doesn't scream Halloween, but it's called Fallen. Um, I'm guessing he's a fallen angel, but he kind of has these bat-like wings. So I kind of threw it in there as a Halloween option. So that is from Fairy and Fantasy 2 by Christine Karen. Two more books. Only two. We're getting there. And they're both by Iana Prosperina. So this first one is Fairy Colouring Book by Iana Prosperina. And I found a couple in here. I found this one, which I thought worked quite nicely. It looks like she looks kind of like a witch trying to sell her potion. Um, I think that's a really cool one. And then... The other one is this one, which again doesn't scream Halloween, but I think because it's a nighttime scene, you've got the moon in the back, she's got the moon kind of on her head and she's got this kind of potion here. It could it could work for Halloween, I think. So I pulled both of those out. So that is from Fairy by Yana Prosperina. And then the last book, which kind of is, I think, a Halloween type book. Uh, this is Witch Season, again, by Yana Prosperina. Let me just zoom you out ever so slightly. Um, and again, you could pretty much colour anything in here for Halloween, and it would work because it's full of witches. <laughs> and I would really, really like to get another page done in here. Um, I've only done one page. Um, I love the artwork in this book, but I always avoid it a little bit because this is the only page I've done um because I feel like I, I, yeah struggle with the paper a little bit I, I tend to use alcohol markers which actually work really well on here so I think I will just if I get a chance I think I'm going to try and do a page in here um with my alcohol markers I love this one this is so cool um but I think I think this this page is my favorite in the book and I never want to start it because I always want to, I always want to leave it and try and, uh, you know, get it exactly right. But I love all the pages in here and I think they're just beautiful and really good for Halloween. Um, but they, they're kind of good for any time of the year, really. But that is Witch Season by Yana Prosperina. So there you go, my Halloween picks from all of my books that I have. I just thought that was kind of a fun thing to share. <laughs> I don't know if you're interested, but those are the kind of Halloween pages that I could find in the books I already owned, rather than going out and buying a specific Halloween book because I really don't need any more books in my life. I have far too many, most of which have one or no pages colored in. So I really need to just work on what I've got. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that little flick through some of my books and I hope to see you back here again soon. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care, everybody.